Hello everyone, uh, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man once again, and before we get started, uh, hello, hi, <laughs> I'm Lion again. I am usually a manga light novel kind of guy, but th given that this is Hobbies of a Man, I wanted to talk about something slightly different, uh, well, still related to manga and anime, but from another one of my hobbies, which is Western novels. And so if anyone is a Western novel type of person and are not really big into anime and manga and light novels, um, hi, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And I hope uh, you guys stick around. I do have a couple other novel uh, Western booktube kind of style projects planned that I'm going to start sometime in August. So please like and subscribe and comment down below and uh, stick around for that. So yeah, let's get on with it now. So today we're gonna talk about five Western fantasy novels that I think could work really well in a really interesting way as manga and anime, but uh, you know, mostly manga. I would prefer the manga over the anime. I'm more of a reader than a watcher, so yeah. Um, so I'm gonna, give you each title, I'm going to give you a brief summary, and then I'll give you a manga, light novel, or anime that is kind of similar, that I think would kind of work well, or like something that can kind of give you a point of reference into what style I'm thinking thinking about when I want these adapted. Obviously this is all theoretical, it's not likely to happen, but it's just a fun thought exercise. Um, so yeah, stick around, please. Uh, I would really appreciate it. So let's just jump into it. The first one that I want to talk about is this YA epic fantasy. It's called Wereworld. Uh, it it's a six book series. And in this world, basically all the noble people are uh, able to transform into animals and like kind of werewolves, were lions, were eagles, you know, were sharks, all types of different therian tropes, like lycanthrope. Uh, something like that. Uh, so they're basically shifters and each family is a different type of animal. But this is a really cool one. One, because I don't think there are many werewolf based manga or manga that feature werewolves prominently. Um, I can't actually find one or an anime. So I was actually going to compare this to Dare Werewolf, which might get a manga adaptation sometime soon. If I remember correctly, I think J Novel Club was talking about it so this is really cool. It's it's a very basic, you know, tried and true epic fantasy method. Okay, it's about a, a, a farm boy that experiences some horrific event that um, then leads to him discovering he has powers and that he's meant for greatness. And then he goes on an adventure to kind of rid the world of evil. It's a, it's a very tried and true method. But the added fact that the powers are some sort of shifting and that there's magic and strength and diff differences between each group of people is very interesting and very well thought out. I really enjoy it. And so I thought it would just be cool to see this in a manga style. Um, most of the settings are a city or a forest uh, usually. So it, it's not that difficult. It kind of be along the lines of like Naruto, like setting wise, uh, obviously it'd be middle medieval Europe, but yeah, their werewolf is probably the closest thing that I can think of. Um, and hopefully that gets a manga soon, but that's basically it for this one. The next one here is the name of the wind. Now this one is written. This is an epic fantasy is written by Patrick Rothfuss. And the story here is not actually all that great, but the writing style is really beautiful, in my opinion. The problem is, the way it's set up, it's that uh, you're in the future listening to the main character recite his story, uh, you know, all the way back from the beginning, all the way to where he is now. So you know that he doesn't die. So the stakes aren't ever super, super high. But it's a very interesting story. There's a lot of interesting interpersonal stuff. That's mostly what this is about. It's like a good character thing uh, with interesting world building more so than like this epic tale of battle between good and evil. And I think it would really work in a magical school slice of life setting, like in, if it was turned into a manga, but with a lot more of the court intrigue kind of stuff. I, I don't know any uh, manga like that specifically, but it's a very like character driven situation. And the main character is mostly at a, 
uh, magic school most of the time. And you do have a lot of slice of life elements and it's like kind of a rough uh, type of slice of life. It's like this kid who gets his family destroyed uh, by these demons. Then he uh, goes to a city. He has to scavenge for years in order to uh, survive. And then he finally gets the ability to go to the magic school. He has to pass a test. And then he has a lot of interpersonal struggles there. And uh, it'd be interesting to see it as a manga. Okay, now we're going to talk about this other one called Codex Alera. This is written by Jim Butcher. This is another epic fantasy. There's a six book series. And this one is kind of interesting. Uh, the, the lore goes that one day Jim Butcher was talking to these people on these forums and he was talking about how you can write a story about anything as long as you're good at writing stories. And then people were like, no, that's not true. And he was like, bet I'll prove it to you. Just give me two things that you think are boring or horrible or, or whatever, and I'll make a good story out of them. And so the other person was like, okay, the Lost Roman Legion and Pokemon. And he was like, okay, I'll write something about it. And so this is what came out of it. So in this world, uh, people bond with nat nature spirits called Furies that can control air, earth, air, fire, water, wood, or metal. And then uh, we follow this kid named Tavi who doesn't have the ability to bond with any, and he's like rare, that he's like the only person ever that has had this. Everyone kind of has the ability to bond with him, except for him. And so he overcomes this issue by being more intelligent than other people, by being able to think circles around people. So it's a really cool concept. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. There's these people that instead of bonding with furies, they bond with animals and they divide themselves into clans depending on which animal they bonded with. So you could have a little bit of a monster girl, monster people type like situation like you have with Nekos and with the Prophetalia and stuff. And uh, then there's these werewolf people or further on in like a later book. And it's just a cool kind of plans within plans type of story with Tavi since he can't use uh, Furies. There's a lot of political intrigue it's a really interesting story and I just think that because it has this sort of setup of animals that you control that do things for you, it, or that battle for you, it, it's it's very in line with a lot of manga and anime. So yeah, it, it, I would think this would actually be really uh, interesting to see adapted. So the next one is Mistborn. Now this one's written by Brandon Sanderson, it's an epic fantasy. And this specific, well, this specific book is the first one in a trilogy. There's actually a second set of Mistborn books, but they're uh, different and they're set in a different time period. This one's a very traditional med medieval type of thing, but uh, the characters, uh, the main character feels kind of like a YA protagonist, more so than a adult fantasy protagonist, but it's still very good. Like I, I have a review on it. So if you guys want to check it out, please do so. I'll leave it up in the card. And this one is basically the bad guy won, like however long ago, the bad guy won and he became this immortal God figure. And he divided people into noblemen and ska, which are slaves or servants. And the servants, the Ska, are getting tired of this. They want to be free. They want to rebel. And so this follows a heist story where the end of the heist is to remove the riches from the uh, Lord Ruler so that he loses power, essentially. That's kind of how it works. Um, and the really interesting thing here is actually the magic system. There's uh, two types of magic that we know of, uh, Ferrukemi and Allomancy. And the main one is Allomancy, and within Allomancy, you ingest metals and then you burn them. And there's only 10 types of metals that you can ingest and burn. And depending if you're a misting, a misting or a Mistborn, depends if you can burn one of them or all of them. And we follow our main character who's a Mistborn. Um, and here, I, I really think of Naruto or Attack on Titan. One of the powers that they have is iron pulling and steel pushing. Those are the first two powers that are available to Mistborns. And so it, it kind of reminds me of the Byakugan, 
where they turn on the power and then they can see blue lines over all over the place that tell them where metals are. And then with their pushing and pulling, they can essentially fly and like swing through the world. Kind of like how the maneuver gear for Attack on Titan works. So it's really interesting. And here there's a, it's a hard magic system. So stuff has to work within certain rules. And it's really interesting how uh, you have to think more so than just rely on your magic in order to win. So I think it'd be really interesting. It, it, it's not a very easy rock, paper, scissors system like in Pokemon. It's a lot more mental. So it'd be really interesting to see how they play that off. Um, this might actually work better as an anime. Brandon Sanderson is working on adapting uh, the Mistborn saga into a TV show. So it's already gonna have an adaptation. I just would like an anime adaptation. I think that'd be super cool. Um, but yeah, now the last one we're talking about is book one in the Temera series. Uh, this one is called His Majesty's Dragon. It's written by Naomi Nobik. And this is a historical fantasy. It's basically um, Napoleonic Wars with dragons. So we follow the, a naval captain called Will Lawrence as he comes into contact with a dragon egg. It hatches and then the dragon bonds with him. And now he has to become a member of the uh, Air Force, basically. The Dragon Air Force. And in here... We have aerial battles, we have naval battles, we have basically a bunch of stuff, but the real crux of the situation is, can you own something that thinks equally to you or better than you? It, which is kind of a parallel to slavery, and so that's why it's kind of set in the N Napoleonic Wars. Uh, English people were thinking about slavery at that point, it was a big discussion that was happening. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I really like this series by itself, but the reason why I thought it would be really cool as manga, it's because we have drifting dragons right here, which is not the same thing, but it would actually kind of fit. You see people on this big carapace thing and interacting with dragons in the air is basically what happens here. So I think it would actually be really cool to have a different type of style or, or uh, a similar style with a different end goal here. So it'd be cool. Plus there's a lot of books of this. So it would be really interesting to see how they would adapt it. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for me. Hopefully if you guys are manga fans, you, um, found some western novels that you might find interesting and if you're western novel people i hope you guys try to pick up some of the light novels manga and anime that i've talked about it'd be cool i would really enjoy it and yeah thank you guys very much please like and subscribe and comment down below what western novels do you guys think should be in a manga or an anime um and yeah thank you guys very much for watching see you guys later